First of all, I would uh, like to thank you all for uh, inviting me. It was a quite last minute thing. Um, I'm not very used to talking off handouts, in all honesty. Um, so why I've done is I've, I have prepared something here which some time ago um, I did have um, a little talk, I did a little speech, and uh, a lot of that's encompassed within this. So I am going to talk about this, and I'm going to read off this handout in front of me. But as I do this, there's a couple of very important things that I really want to put forward. Um, I'm here to represent Islam, and there are some uncomfortable things and aspects about Islam that really need to be out in the open. Uh, there are certain perceptions about Islam and Muslims that need to be out in the open. So if I was to stand here and talk all fluffy, I wouldn't really be getting the message across. So I begin by saying, I'm talking about the spirit of tolerance in Islam. And to talk about intolerance, and talk about the concept of intolerance as being something that's on the increase in the world today, which is causing death, Genocide, violence, religious persecution, as well as confrontations on different levels. As soon as you turn on the TV, it's one of the most common things you will see. Our children are exposed to it, our families are exposed to it, and our communities are exposed to it. Sometimes it is racial and ethnic. Sometimes it is religious and ideological. Other times, it is political and it's social. So there are a number of varied reasons for some of the violence that you see there. Not just religious, but many other differing factors that separate communities. In every situation, it is evil and painful. And that's something that we all agree upon. That any kind of transgression, persecution, killing, murder, is bad and evil. How can we solve the problem of intolerance? What is the solution? How can we assert our own beliefs and positions without being intolerant to others? Which is another very important aspect of what we all here for. We have beliefs. We believe in that wholeheartedly. There are others around us who have different beliefs. How do we live with this issue? How can we bring tolerance into the world today? I would like to discuss some of these issues from an Islamic point of view. What is tolerance? Now literally the word tolerance means to bear. It's to bear a burden, to bear something, which is something that makes you feel uncomfortable. As a concept, it means respect, acceptance, an appreciation of the rich diversity of the world's cultures, forms of expression and ways of being human. Now, for somebody who studied Arabic for quite a considerable time, who teaches Arabic regularly, and the Islam through the Arabic medium, there are many, many words within the Quran, within the prophetic traditions, which refer to tolerance. Words such as the Sam. There are also the words that give similar meanings such as hilm, which means forbearance, or afu, meaning to pardon and to forgive people, even when it means a misunderstanding, to forgive them on that basis. Or sah, to overlook and disregard something that's been done in the wrong way. But yet, the answer to that would be to just tolerate it. There is a very clear verse of the Holy Quran in chapter 6, verse 108, where God says, And do not abuse those whom they call upon besides Allah, lest exceeding the limits they should abuse Allah out of ignorance. Thus have we made fair seeming to every people their deeds. Then to their Lord shall be their return, so he will inform them of what they did. This is the verse of the Holy Quran. Now, tolerance is a basic principle of Islam. It always has been and always will be. 
It is a religious moral duty for Muslims to be tolerant. It does not mean concession, condescension, or indulgence. It does not mean lack of principles or lack of seriousness about one's principles. Sometimes it is said people are tolerant of things that they do not care about. But this is not the case in Islam. Tolerance according to Islam does not mean that we believe that all the religions are the same. It does not mean that we do not believe in the supremacy of Islam over other faiths and ideologies. And that's something important. Muslims do not believe the supremacy of Islam. It does not mean that we do not convey the message of Islam to others and do not wish them to become Muslims. And that's another very important aspect about many of our faiths. The UNESCO principles of tolerance say, consistent with respect for human rights, the practice of tolerance does not mean toleration of social injustice or the abandonment or weakening of one's convictions. It means that one is free to adhere to one's own convictions and accepts that others adhere to theirs. That's what tolerance is. It means accepting the fact that human beings naturally diverse in their appearance, situation, speech, behavior, values, have the right to live in peace and to be as they are. It also means that one's views are not to be imposed on others. Tolerance comes from our recognition of a number of principles. The first, the dignity of the human beings. The second, the basic equality of all human beings. The third, universal human rights. The fourth, fundamental freedom of thought, conscience, and belief. Just referring to the Quran, Muslims differ, and the Muslim community is not homogenous. There are many different variants. Islam exists in many, many different countries where people eat different food, share different ideas, wear different clothes, live different lives have different values, but yet they have one thing in common, that they believe in the Qur'an, and they practice their religion of Islam. So on that basis, if there's any pivotal place that I should start, it should be from the Qur'an. That is something that all Muslims agree upon. The Qur'an says, Allah does not forbid you that you show kindness and deal justly with those who did not fight you in your religion and did not drive you out from your homes. Islam teaches that fighting is only against those who fight. Allah says, fight in the cause of Allah those who fight you, but do not transgress limits, for Allah loves not transgressors. And the concept of transgression is a massive concept in Islam. There are books upon books that have been written, all within the realm of tolerance. Islam may tolerate anything, but it teaches zero tolerance for injustice, for oppression, and for violation of the rights of other human beings. Allah says, and why should you not fight in the cause of Allah and those who, being weak, are ill-treated and oppressed? Men, women, children, whose cry is, our Lord, rescue us from this town, whose people are pressers and raisers, a raise for us from your side, one who will protect, a raise for us from your side, one who will help. So Islam has a problem with oppression, with transgression. Islam teaches tolerance in all levels. It teaches tolerance on individual levels, groups and states. It should be a political legal requirement in Islam. Tolerance is a mechanism that upholds human rights, pluralism, including cultural pluralism, and the rule of law. The Quran says very clearly, to every people have we appointed rites and ceremonies which they must follow. Let them not then dispute with you on the matter but do invite them to your Lord, for you are assuredly on the right way. 
if they do wrangle with you, say God knows best what is what it is you are doing. God will judge between you on, on the day of judgment concerning the matters in which you differ. <coughs> this suggests very clearly an element of tolerance, that people have a right to their own religion. A. There are many levels of tolerance between family members, between husband and wife, between parents and children, between siblings. Islam addresses that thoroughly through the Quran through the prophetic traditions. Tolerance between the members of the community. Tolerance in views and opinions. Tolerance between the Madhaib. The Madhaib are the different Islamic juristic schools and how they differ in their interpretation of the Quran and the prophetic tradition. C. Tolerance between Muslims and the people of other faiths. Interfaith relations, dialogue and cooperation. Muslims have been generally very tolerant people. And there are many, many case histories through the history that we have that very clearly demonstrates that. And I will talk about that in a while. We must emphasize this virtue among us and in the world today. Tolerance is needed among our communities. We must foster tolerance through deliberate policies and efforts. Our centers should be multi-ethnic. We should teach our children respect of each other. We should not generalize about our races and cultures. We should have more exchange visits and meetings with each other, each other. This is in reference to the Quran. Now, for a, a book to be written which very clearly outlines the codes of conduct for Muslims is one thing. But I think it's very, very important to make reference to the people who followed that book. So the messenger of God the Masjid of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with a very clear message. And just like you would give a person a very clear label as a name because it identifies that person amongst others, he was named the Rahmatul Alameen, the mercy upon the world, the mercy, mercy upon all people. This reference is not just to Muslims, but rather it's a reference to every being. On that basis, there are many accounts in history, if you were to read the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that there were times where he went to certain villages when Islam was weak, and people would pelt him with stones and hurt him. He would bleed. And there were instances where the angels would approach him and ask him, if you wish, just through one order, we would destroy the whole of that village. Yet he would respond that maybe there will be peace-loving people that will come from the generations after them. This is a sign of tolerance. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went to Medina, and Medina was a place where there was multi-faiths. There was Christianity there. There was Judaism there. And there was all sorts of other faiths within that. And at that particular time, it was this very same prophet who gathered all the faiths together and formulated a treaty, a pact of tolerance, patience, support, and interfaith. Now, that is the message of the prophet. Let's look at those who were taught by the prophet those who continue the message. One particular figure comes to mind, but sometimes this particular figure is portrayed in the wrong way. And that is the Caliph, Umar. He was somebody who was at the peak of the expansion of Islam. And at that time, he was in Palestine. And when he was there, one of the things that actually had happened is one of the, the priests that were there, he was taking him around all the sites of that particular place at, the very, at that very moment in time. And one of the things that arose at that time is Umar realized that it was time for prayer. So he turned around to his companions 
and he explained it is time to pray. This very same priest asked him if it was possible that he could pray in the church. And one of the reasons why he did that was because he felt that if he had done this, then the Muslims would show some kind of respect towards the church. Umar's response was, no, I will not pray in the church. Why? Because I fear that if I pray in the church, people will take this as a Muslim. And it's very important that we maintain the rights of all the people here, be whichever faith. And for this instance, it's very, very important that we have many different types of Muslims, just like we have many different types of Christians, just like we have many different types of Jews, just like we have many different types of Hindus. And each one has their own understanding of their faith, their own interpretation of their faith. But to consider a faith on a blanket concept solely through the basis of a serious minority who get a lot more viewing on TV is injustice in itself. I'll finish on that note and I would like to say one final thing that Islam is the spirit of tolerance.